of you who have your Bibles with you, wherever you are, kindly turn with me to the prophet Isaiah, the chapter number 40. And let's read the verses 28, 29, 30, and 31. Tonight's message is anchored on Isaiah chapter number 40, the verse 28, 29, 30, and 31. The Bible says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth fainted not, neither is weary. We human beings get weary, but our Father doesn't get weary. There is no searching of his understanding. 29, he give power to the faint, and to them that have no increase strength. 30, even the youth shall faint. And the young men shall utterly fall. 31, the last verse. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. They shall mount up with wings as the eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Tonight's message is anchored on this scripture and upon this scripture. I welcome you to our studies, to our broadcast tonight in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you always do for us, respectfully, call someone, send somebody a WhatsApp message or a text message or any medium you can use to invite any son or daughter of the kingdom you know that needs to hear this message tonight so that they all join us. And please pick your writing materials, get your Holy Bible with you, and all other things that you may need. And whatever would distract you from tonight's message, I beg you through Christ, please put them aside because this is the most important message of all the messages we've preached under this series, God's Prayer. Tonight, we we'll look on that. We we'll look tonight. We we'll look at the subject: the eagle and spiritual renewal. The eagle and spiritual renewal. Wherever you are, kindly bow down your head and whisper a prayer for me. That God will hold me here as a microphone, as He always does, and speak to us. Let us pray. So it all the spirit without you, I can do nothing. This is an opportunity to draw people from the kingdom of the devil into our kingdom. Blessed Holy Spirit. Take now, therefore, this feeble lips of clay. Make it a microphone in your hands, Holy Spirit, please. And speak through me, standing here with you. And stir heart and soul and minds of sons and daughters of the kingdom who have gone astray. Bring them in and those who are outside. May you take this message and draw them closer. Take me out of flesh, Holy Spirit, please put me in spirit. And speak, let the voice of Jesus, your voice and Father's voice be heard. By whoever is watching or listening or will listen later. That wherever this message will be played, angels interpret the words to your people. I've asked in no other name except the name that is given among men, by which we must be saved. Jesus Christ, the Holy Son of God. Amen and amen. The eagle and spiritual renewal. Jesus is coming again. It is a fact. He promised he will come. He has never lied and he's not going to lie. He is coming again. And he's coming for people whose character, attitude, habits resemble him. If our character, our behavior does not by the grace of the Holy Spirit become like 
that of Jesus. No matter any church we attend, let's forget about heaven. So I shout out to say that church membership alone is not enough to be a candidate for the kingdom of God. Church membership, having your name on the church roll, doesn't save anyone unless my character, your character, we permit the Holy Spirit because we can't do it ourselves to change us to look like that of Jesus Christ. It is only Christ-like character that will send us into the kingdom of glory. Anybody who will enter heaven's gates, as you can see on the screen, must have the DNA of Jesus Christ, without which you can't be saved. Revelation chapter number 21, verse number 27, the great apostle speaking says, But there shall by no means enter it, the it there is heaven, anything that defies or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. If our character does not become like the character of Jesus, our names can never be written in the book of life. Therefore, tonight, I plead with you to pay attention to me carefully and follow and listen and practice whatever God is going to share through this microphone to you and to me. The eagle gets weary. The eagle becomes weak. Every year, it becomes weak as a result of moving up and down. In much the same way, the Christian life is not a sprint. It is a marathon. The Christian life is not straight. It is zigzag. Sometimes you are up. Sometimes you are down. And that calls for the need to renew ourselves every day, every month, every year, in order to keep our connection with the Son of God intact. The eagle gets weary. Our subject tonight is the eagle and spiritual self-renewal. Isaiah chapter number 40, verse number 28 to 31 says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to those who are weak. The Christians sometimes become weak. And when you are weak, Scripture says God can give you power if you follow what we are going to learn tonight. And to those who have no might, God increases strength. Even young people, the youth, shall faint and be weary. And young men shall utterly fall. Now listen. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like the eagles. They shall run and not be weary when God gives them power and strength. They shall walk and not faint. Psalmist, Psalm 103, verse number 1 and verse number 5. David the psalmist again talking about the eagle and his constant renewing of himself from time to time says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Who satisfy your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Again, I repeat, the Christian life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. The Christian life is not straight. Sometimes you are up. Sometimes you are down. The same thing happens to the eagle. Every year, the eagle goes through what we call the molten process. After doing all kinds of things throughout the year, it comes a time in the life of this bird of God. The pet of God. That it set itself aside for 40 days to go through what we call the molting process and renew itself. Pastor, how does he do it? When the eagle becomes weak, as you can see on the screen, 
it takes 40 days aside to do nothing. It flies to a mountainous place where there are rocks. And when it gets there, the eagle does what we call the molting process. It plucks all its feathers on its body. It begins to hit its beak against the rock and then sharpen its claws. Forty solid days, the eagle will be there doing nothing but going through self-renewal, self-renewal, hitting its beak against the rock, sharpening the claws, making sure that everything that it needs to get within the 40 days gets ready before it comes up. Plucking all its feathers, like I said, and after 40 days of going through this exercise, it does away with all the feathers on it. It removes the beak. It sharpens the claws. And after 40 days, look at how the eagle looks like. This was before. After 40 days of renewal, this is how the eagle looks like. This bird is telling us something that we also as Christians need to go through from time to time what can be called self-renewal. I have just mentioned the Christian journey is not straight. Sometimes you are up, sometimes you are down. And therefore, there is the need for us to renew ourselves daily, to renew ourselves monthly, to renew ourselves quarterly, to renew ourselves yearly. The Bible says, only God doesn't become weary, but human beings, we do become weary. And like the eagle, who takes 40 solid days to go and remove all the feathers on his body for new one to grow, sharpen the claws, sharpen the beak, so that it will be able to perform its function throughout the following year, every Christian who is serious and want to make it into the kingdom of God must practice this exercise of the eagle. Pastor, how do I do that? Number one, in order to renew yourself, in order to regain strength as a child of God, because automatically from time to time you become weary, as a result of the vicissitudes of life, you need to cut off certain unhealthy relationships. Let me put it differently. You need to be like the prodigal son. And abandon some friends, abandon some associations, abandon some social groups, abandon some WhatsApp groups. You must let them go in order to renew yourself. Pastor, is this one also biblical? Luke chapter 15, the verse number 17 to 20. The Bible speaks about a prodigal son. The Bible says, this gentleman had friends who were worldly, but when he came to himself, something happened. Let's read it. Luke 15, 17 to 20. But when this prodigal son came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise. In other words, I am going to break my relationship with the people around me now and go to my father. And I will say to him, Dad, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Please treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose. The gentleman broke the relationship with the people who were around him. He arose and left them and came to his father. Bible says while he was yet at a distance, his father saw him and had compassion on him. And the father ran and embraced him. And kiss him. Some of you have gone away like the prodigal son. As you listen to me tonight. January. February. March. April. May. June. We are in July. 31st December 2020. You were in church. You made promises to God. You were not going to do certain things in 2021. As we speak, you have become even worse than when you, who, how you were in 2020. It is time like a prodigal son to arise, break off relationship with certain people, 
and run to your father and tell daddy, I am back home, but I am not ready to be called your son. Have mercy on me. Receive me as one of your high servants. And like scripture said, Jesus is going to embrace you. Jesus is going to welcome you. He is ready. Come back. You are the eaglet. Remember, he is the eagle. You are the eaglet. I am the eaglet. The children of God, we are weary. We get weary. If you are worried, the Bible says, number one thing you need to do, like the prodigal son, Jesus is calling. Come back home. Get up. Break relationship with anything that is impeding your spiritual growth. And come back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor, what again should I do? Number two. If you have not been inaugurated, if you have not been initiated, you have to do it. If you have been in initiated through baptism by immersion, but you have become so filthy, and the Spirit of God is telling you to go and be re-inaugurated, please do it. Pastor, is that one too in the Bible? John chapter 3. Verse number 5. You can start from verse number 1 to 5. But I'm reading verse number 5. John chapter 3. Verse number 5. The need for you to come back. You were eating swine food. Like the prodigal son. Now you have broken the relationship. You are coming back home. One thing you need to do. When this young man came to the house. The Bible says the father made him to be washed. And then the father put new clothing on him. In the same manner. Those who have become weary. We are in the seventh month of the year. I am appealing to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get rewashed, or if I've already been washed, I'll come back to that point that you need to do. Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless it is non negotiable, one is born of water and the Holy Spirit, that person cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So it is non negotiable to be re inaugurated or inaugurated. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 27. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 27, Paul the Apostle speaking, say, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on the DNA, the character, the attitude, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Would you say amen out there where you are? So if you have never been baptized in water, not sprinkling, and you want to be a kingdom of God citizen, when Jesus appears, you want to be a member. I encourage you tonight, get inaugurated. Because without which, you can't be saved. You can't be officially welcomed into the kingdom. But if you have already been inaugurated, but you became weary, you went back to the swine food, you went back to those old friends, you have soiled the righteousness of Christ that was put on you during baptism. Jesus has two things for you. Number one, either you go back and rewash, like the young man was rewashed when he came back home, or you come to the third one, which I will share with you quickly. Pastor, what evidence again do you have? Mark chapter 16, verse number 15 and 16, scripture says, And Jesus said to them when he was allowed to go, Go into the world, Melchizedek, and all the apostles, and all, all those who preach about me. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. In other words, he who does not believe and will not be baptized will be condemned, will go to hell. But he who does not believe will be condemned. This is Jesus speaking. So no matter the degree you've gone, Christ can still welcome you to the kingdom. No matter how filthy you have become, seven months, you can still be rewashed, you can still come back into the kingdom. If the Spirit of God impresses upon you that you need to go back to watery grave again and get rewashed. Please don't postpone it. Don't hesitate. But if the spirit does not impress on you to go and rewash, there is a third thing you can do. Pastor, what is that third thing? This is it. The Lord's Supper. Fast for three days. Maximum. You can do purely water fasting. You drink water throughout the entire three days. You can do purely fruit fasting. You eat only fruit throughout the entire three days. And when you are done, anywhere that you hear that a proper communion service is going to be conducted, please go and eat. 
I'm saying proper communion service because I'm speaking to non-Adventists and Adventists as well. If we're Seventh-day Adventists, after your fasting, look for any church of the Seventh-day Adventists that is conducting communion service, and please attend. Pastor, is that one also in the Bible? How important is the communion service for my spiritual renewal? Well, Jesus says this, and this is the scripture. John chapter 6, verse number 51. John chapter 6, verse number 51, and then 53 to 56. John chapter 6, 51, 53 to 50. Jesus speaking says, I, Jesus, I am the living bread. Mm, I love this. Which came down from heaven. If anyone eat of this bread, this bread, that is me, Jesus, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh. Praise the Lord. Which I shall give for the life of the world. He's not done. Then Jesus said to them, 53, going. Most assuredly, I say to you, the you there represent you and me, all of us, kingdom, sons and daughters, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. So those of you who dodges or run away from communion service, did you hear that? Unless you eat and drink the Son of, son of Man, his blood and his flesh, you have no life in you. Listen, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, has eternal life. Jesus is not done. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He's not done. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me will live because of me. Hallelujah. And this is the symbol of his flesh and blood that he's talking about. So nobody can grow spiritually, can renew himself or herself without constant, periodic attendance to the lost table. The eagle gets weary. It renews itself every year, 40 days. We also get weary because the Christian life is up and down. Up and down. It is not straight. It's zigzag. Today you are up. The next day you are down. Because of the vicissitudes of life. And therefore there is the importance for every Christian. From time to time. To set yourself aside. And go through this period of spiritual renewal we are talking about. So pastor. You talk about the need for us to do A, B, C. Now, what is the fourth point? For those of you who are joining us, we said, number one, break relationship with anything that is impeding your spiritual growth and development, including some WhatsApp groups you have to leave. It is not benefiting you spiritually. What are you doing there? It is not improving your life. What are you doing there? It is rather drawing you back, break relationship with some friends, with some social networks. Get it off your way. And grow. And then number two, we said, make sure when you break that relationship, you allow yourself to be inaugurated. And after the inauguration, if you have never been inaugurated, as in baptized, you have never been baptized in water by immersion, get it done. But if you have been immersed in water, and the Spirit of God is still telling you where you've gone, and you are coming back up, you are so filthy, you need sometimes the Spirit does that. Go back to the watery grave and was pleased to. But the Spirit does not impress us upon your heart to go and re inaugurate yourself, so to speak. Attend the communion service. Pastor, what is number four? Number four is use devotion as a catalyst. Use depo devotion as a catalyst. Pastor, what do you mean? In other words, cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Every dawn, I'm emphasizing, every dawn for character transformation. Pastor, how do I cooperate with the Holy Spirit? Paul said, Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 8. I'll come to it quick, quick, quickly. Ephesians 5, verse 18, the apostle Paul speaking by the Holy Spirit says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, mm. but be filled with the Spirit. Did you hear that? 
Be filled with the Spirit. Mark 1, 35. It was the practice of Jesus, our blessed Lord, according to Josephus, the Jewish historian. He says that when Christ attained age 12, till he went to Calvary, there was this practice of Christ that he did consistently from age 12 till he went to Calvary. Pastor, what was that practice? Every morning, dawn, 3 a.m., Jesus Christ will find a quiet place and will kneel down and then use that devotional time to build, so to speak, his spirituality, to reconnect with his father. Mark 1.35, it's on your screen. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, did you hear that? Having risen a long while before daylight, Christians of today, we have to stop sleeping and sleeping and sleeping. If you want to grow spiritually, you need to cut the number of hours you sleep. Jesus, our blessed Lord himself, cut the number of hours you will sleep. Bible says, now in the morning, having risen a long while before day, Josephus says 3 a.m., he, Jesus, went out and departed into a quiet place, a solitary place. What did he go there to do? And there he had his devotion. He went to pray, to reconnect with the Lord. Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27. During your quiet hour, early in the morning, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., later 5 a.m., there's a promise in Scripture you have to claim, and this is the promise. We are renewing ourselves, and we are getting back to God. This is July. We promised the Lord in January that we're not going to do certain things, but we have become worse than before. God says, I am still waiting for sons and daughters of the kingdom to come back home. And that is why we're talking about it tonight. Get ready, spend some time with the Lord like the eagle, alone with the Lord, and renew yourself. There's this promise every dawn I encourage you to claim. Ezekiel 36, 25, 27, the Bible says, And I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness. This is God speaking. I will do it. God says, I will do it. Not you will do it. I will do it because you can't do it for yourself. Just come, morning devotion, spend time with me, and I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will, God is speaking, cleanse you. A new heart also I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I love this one. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. He's not done. And cause you to walk in my statutes and in my judgment, in my statutes, and you shall keep my ordinances and do them. Can I hear amen out there? So like Jesus, every morning, I challenge you, if you can do it the next 21 days consistently without break, there will be breakthrough in your life. You will be renewed. The eagle spends 40 days to renew itself. If you can do 21 days like Daniel did, you will come back to daddy and he says, I will, I will, I will, I will do that. I will put, I will sprinkle clean water on you. I will give you a new heart. I'll put my spirit within you. I'll wash you from fitness. I will, I will. About five of them in that test. Every morning, just go to daddy, like Jesus, Mark 1, 25. And tell your father, my father, daddy, uh, like the prodigal son, I've become filthy. I've eaten swine food. I've, I've had friends who were worldly. They, 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 they have sought to speak, make me worse than I was when I was living home. But Pastor Melchizedek says on television, I should come. You will wash, you will cleanse, you will sanctify, you will purify. So I am here the next 21 days. I want to have this daily morning time with you. Just one hour, just 30 minutes. My Bible, my hymn book, on my knees. And see what the Lord will do. You need the Spirit of God to help you. The fact of the matter is this. None of us can become good. None of us can of our own self change our character. It's impossible. None of us can stop doing devilish things, satanic things. No, none of us can stop. We need external power. And that power is the Holy Spirit which God gave to Jesus to give to us. So in Luke 11, 9 to 13, Jesus says, whoever will ask, the Father is ready to give the Holy Spirit. So the next 21 days, 
We are renewing ourselves. Go back to the Father. Like Jesus in Mark 1 35. If you can fast, fast. If you can fast every dawn, meet them and pour your heart out to them. Mention all those challenges in your life as far as your spiritual growth is concerned. And tell the Holy Spirit to take them away and burn them. And then possess your body, soul, and spirit, and mind, the entire system. And use you to do what he wants to use you to do. And you see what will happen in your life. The fact of the matter is, if we don't have the spirit of God in us, we can't be saved. Anybody without the Holy Spirit, you don't belong to God, you belong to Lucifer. Please listen to me again. Any Christian, so to speak, anybody who profess faith in Jesus, but you don't have the spirit of God indwelling you, controlling you to do the things of the kingdom, you will be lost. Pastor, is in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Romans chapter 8. Verse number 9. Romans chapter 8. Verse number 9. Of course, you can add verse number 14 to it. Now, if anyone, whether you go to SDA, whether you are a Catholic, whether you are charismatic or a Pentecostal, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not Christ. He is not his. And that is why it is important That like the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 5, 18, receive the Spirit of God. Be filled every morning with the Holy Spirit. The vicissitudes of life, like this water, make every day, if you please, our spiritual cup goes down somehow. But the more we go before the Lord every day, he fills our cup. As we go through the activities of the day, our spiritual zeal and energy, like this water, it's not full because I have drunk some part of it, some portion of it. But in order for it to be full, I have to go to Father every morning at dawn. And tell him like Jesus did in Mark 1, 35. According to your promise in Ezekiel 36, 25, 27, according to your promise. In Luke 11, 9 to 13, Father, according to your promise. In Acts chapter 1, verse number 4, 5 and 8, according to your promise in Joel 2, 28, that in the last days you pour out your spirit. I have come. Feel me now. Eswati, feel me now. My spirituality has gone down. Father, feel me now. And the Bible says you feel it. The eagle, when it becomes weary, 40 days go through the molten process. Very difficult process, very painful process to regrow its feathers, to sharpen its beak and claws, and then come out brand new. We, as sons and daughters of God, should imitate this pet of God by doing similar things. Once a year, there's nothing wrong with it. Once a quarter, there's nothing wrong with it. Once a month, there's nothing wrong with it. Once a week, there's nothing wrong. Now, that brings me to my point number five about how to renew your spirituality. Pastor, what is point number five? Make a weekly appointment with a trinity. Make a weekly appointment with a trinity. You can call it my personal day with God. There are seven days in the week. Every Christian, every son and daughter of the kingdom who want to please the Lord, who want to conquer self, who want the Holy Spirit to fill him, you cannot go a whole seven days without spending quality time with the Lord alone. You should not do that and you must not do that. Seven days, take one day off. It should not be the Sabbath day. Some do it on their day of birth. If you can decide not to go to work, don't go to work. Lock yourself in your room. It's you, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, your Bible, your hymn book. If you're an Adventist, spirit of prophecy books. 
from morning 6 a.m. to probably in the evening 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. or 3 p.m. Alone with the Lord. Weekly appointment with the Lord. And see what will happen in your life. As I know, if I don't go to work, blah, 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 you give excuses, okay? What about Sunday? Or what about Saturday? In worst case scenario. In this COVID time, we spend two hours in church. The remaining hours, what do you do with it? If I were you, the remaining hours, let's say we spend three hours in church. After 12, from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 p.m., quality time with the Lord, alone in your room. Your Bible, your spirit of prophecy books, your hymn now, because you'll be singing and God will be speaking to you, so you need notebooks or notepad to take down notes as you read scripture. And then the Father is there, the Holy Spirit is there, Jesus himself is there. Imagine having a meeting with them, alone. Every serious Christian must take this serious. Make a weekly appointment with the Lord. You can fast or you can choose not to fast, but make the appointment. John chapter 5, verse number 39, Jesus Christ speaking says, You, you, search the scriptures. <laughs> Lord, why should we set the scripture? For in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. So read and leave the Bible. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Your word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. John chapter 15, 10 and 14, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. We are renewing ourselves spiritually. So that brings me to my point number six. You have to leave what you read. Thus saith the Lord should be your creed. If the Bible said it, Holy Spirit give me power to live it. Because I can't do it without your aid. If God has instructed it, Holy Spirit anoint me, empower me to be obedient to the word of God. All of scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Oh, not some. Unless the ceremonial ones got Christ's death, he abolished it on the cross. But every other thing, plead with the Holy Spirit. Nobody can call himself a good citizen without obeying the laws and the regulations of the country he comes from. No. And therefore, if we call ourselves sons and daughters of the kingdom, this book should be our creed. We must live it by the empowerment and the grace of the Holy Spirit. And include the Ten Commandments. Pastor, why are you singling the Ten Commandments? Because it is the only portion in the Bible that our father, Odoman Kumar Tredi Amponyangopon, wrote them himself with his finger on a rock, tablet of stone. Oh, no, I'm not Bible. I'm not sure the Bible. I'm not sure the Bible. I'm not sure the Bible. A friend of papyrus or papyri, ne paper, so to speak. What I say. When you come on here, so or train the man to do a describe on the sun and the bay. And when you come on, be to my train or papyrus or another papyri, you be so. You know, be your train. A boss. As train is a museum for born. Now I'm finding quite Atlantic Ocean. We see any discover born on quite a bit. We need train or so. I'm prepared. And now, when say, the man say do not ten suggestions. Is no longer needed. And then one man has suffered preach, he said, we are saved by grace and therefore you can disregard the word of God and live anyhow. I don't know what the Bible and call him. Nobody can please God without obeying God. Shadia. Bonsam. Yangupon Mransum to the constitution, I call it the constitution of heaven. He disobeyed number 10. Keke. 10. Yangu Pama Nantana heaven. God did not continue to admit him in heaven. Or permanently heaven. 
into what makes end time Christians think that we shall be saved by grace and therefore we can disregard God's rules and regulations and laws and still we will be admitted to heaven. Whereas, God banished them from heaven. What makes us think like that? Preachers of grace. Grace in the So for. I don't know what the Belgian who preached the Edda Dancrofon used to buy or no was a more. John 14, verse number 21. John 14, verse number 21 and 23. He who has my commandments and keep them. The all member I know this one. It is he who loves me on the domain. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. Now, dear, or do me be an amazed jack. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. I love this one. And Jesus said, Jesus answered and answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, will come. To him and dwell in him and make our home with him. Can you imagine? Oh Lord, let it be my experience forever. Can you imagine, sir? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, indwelling in you fully. Omu chiumu, omu ne control. Demons possessing crofo. And a demons and control crop for no more yet, dear. Or more demons and a pay. Imagine, sir, Yamir Jaubano and Concon Tim or Timmy Fu or Mesa. No more control. What will happen in the world as far as our influence is concerned? Are you getting the picture? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are in you. They control you, so to speak, they regulate you. Produce or Musu no more by Omu ministry be beer through you. And on the promise in John 14 21 to yes, I make promise. Or say, So would Dima said yes, so now would dummy, now make canal the bay of Juma, many meta. We, plural, ya be baba betanomu. Nay, I ye in fear womu, Tinami be see the tune in you. No power of the devil can touch you. No demon in hell can touch you. There is nothing that God wants to accomplish through you. Be best open up. But when they are not in us, anything is possible. Point number six, regular fellowship with the saints. Qua sorry. Qua sorry. Yame baby. Our Father will call for meeting, and you absent yourself. It is dangerous for your spirituality. These days, most of the meetings are held online via technology. Please be part. It is still a constituted assembly of God's children. You cannot claim to belong to God and his kingdom. Whereas when he calls for a meeting, either online or in person, you absent yourself. Because it is scriptural. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 25 says, Hebrews 10, verse number 25 says, Not neglecting to meet together as sons and daughters of the kingdom of God, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more, as you see the day drawing nigh. Did you hear that? Fire give birth to fire. When we meet in church, you have fire in you, I have fire in me, then more fire. But when you have sent yourself, somebody fire probably can enlighten your fire. But because you did not come to the meeting, your fire will keep growing deep. Church attendance, regular fellowship with the saints, it's not optional for any child of God. No. Whether online or in person, it is that is constituted assembly. He comes there. Scripture says where we are two or three. And we meet in the name of Jesus Christ. He's there. So when the church meets on Zoom, the church meets on whatever platform, online. Jesus is there. Prayer meeting. Virtual. He's there. Sunday Bible study. Whatever day you do your Bible study. Zoom. He's there. In person. He's there. And therefore you have to be there. Finally, 
Pastor, how do I renew my spirituality? If I become weary, or now I am weary, seven months into 2020, I am weary. How do I do it? Point number seven, which I believe is the last one. Practice what Max Lucado called the presence of God. Practice what Max called the presence of God. Pastor, what does it mean? It simply means wherever you are, cultivate the mindset that Jesus is with you. The Father is watching you from heaven. The Holy Spirit is in you. Angels have surrounded you. I've mentioned that the Christian life is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It is not strict, it is zigzag. Today you are up, the next day you are down. But if you are able to consistently or constantly practice the presence of God, whilst you are driving, Jesus, Father, Holy Spirit, and the angels are in the car, so you are careful as to what you say to a driver who will cross you. When you are in church, they are in you, sitting around you. So you are careful how you behave in the presence of God. When you are at a workplace, even though it's a social place or it's a corporate place, but you know that they are with you there, so you are careful as to how you work. You are careful as to what you speak, what you think, because they read the thought and the innermost part, whatever we have reason. When you are in your house, in your bedroom, in your hall, etc., they are there. When you are watching TV, don't forget, the angels and Father, Son, Holy Spirit are seated with you. In that hall, they are watching the TV. So it makes you careful as to what to watch and what not to watch. Because they are everywhere. You have cultivated the mindset that they are with you wherever you go. It keeps you away from evil and from sin. Especially presumptuous sins. God wants us to be perfect. Listen to me carefully. Anything that our Father knows that we cannot do it, He has made provision for its attainment. Please listen to me carefully. One of the things God requires us to do is for us to be perfect in our ways. I've heard the argument from some Christians that it is impossible. If it were not possible, Christ would not have asked us to be. If it were not possible, He has already made provision for it. The Holy Spirit in us and with us makes us perfect, so to speak. Matthew 5, 48, you, therefore, a son, a daughter of the kingdom, must, it's mandatory, must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Because if you don't attain that perfection, we can't. Pastor, but are you sure we can do it? We cannot, and that is why he has made available what can help us to become the Holy Spirit available. We have to ask the Spirit of God to use and to spend us. Romans 12, verse number 1 and 2. Romans 12, verse number 1 and 2. Romans 12, verse number I beseech you, therefore, as I wrap up, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy. Jesus is with you wherever you go, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be renewed, by, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is good and acceptable to the Lord. As I end, Leviticus 11, verse 45. For I am the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt, speaking specifically to the Israelites, now speaking to all Christians who profess faith in Jesus Christ, to be your God, you shall therefore be holy. If God knows that we cannot become, he wouldn't ask us to become. He has made provisions for us to become holy, and it's the Holy Spirit availability. Be holy, for I am holy. First Peter 1, 15 and 16. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. Jesus is coming again. And he's coming for people whose spirituality is strong. Whose connection with him is intact. Jesus is coming for people who have received his righteousness and his holiness. But those who will not follow these seven steps to renew themselves spiritually as the eagle does in 40 days. I'm afraid to announce once again that this fire was not prepared for any human being. It was prepared for the devil. This is our home, sons and daughters of kingdom. Let us do whatever we have to do on our part. God is much more than ready to do his part 
to make us sons and daughters of the kingdom and candidates of heaven who will be robed in white to enter the city of gold. The ego, this is his old self. When it becomes weary, when it becomes weak, it goes through 40 days of renewal. And after 40 days, it looks brand new. God has spoken to us tonight that we also need to renew ourselves. We need to work out our own salvation. Philippians 2 verse 12. Your fear and trembling and God will help us. Tonight, I present to you the man who can give us what we cannot have. In order for us to renew ourselves. In order for us to be back to Christ again. In order for us to receive his righteousness. In order for our name to be entered into the book of life. If you are listening to me, you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. I present the one I work for to you. Jesus, my Savior, my Lord. Wherever you are. Just bow down your head with me as we pray. Dear Lord, anybody who has gone astray like the prodigal son, and is tonight pleading with you to bring him back, send angels to meet him on the way, I pray. Don't lose any son or daughter of the kingdom who has gone astray and has messed up. Whatever, Lord, you do to bring all of them who have gone astray back, please do. And those who are favored by your grace, you've granted us grace to get connected to you, and we are still connected to you. Lord, please keep us away from going astray. Hide us in you. We claim your promise tonight where you said you and Father and Holy Spirit will come and make your home in us. Please, you are welcome to make your home in anybody who is willing. Start with me. Continue with my wife and children. Anybody who is willing to be saved, make your home Jesus in us and prepare us for your soon coming. The ego renew itself. Grant us the desire and the passion to also renew ourselves. Bless us and get us ready for your soon coming. Master, in your name I've prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. God richly bless you. God willing, our last message on this series of God's pet comes off next week, Monday, where we'll go talk about the bird and leadership. Don't miss it. Very powerful. It will blow your mind. See you, God willing, on Monday if Jesus tarries. I love you. God bless you.